Hello. Uh, today I will be doing a reading of Janet Waking by John Crow Ransom. So welcome to Bards in the Basement. John Crow Ransom, I, I first encountered him as a, a student um, at the Univers University of Illinois at Chicago, and it wasn't through his poetry, but through his literary criticism. Um, on the, the, the left-hand side of the screen, you see the poem itself. On the right-hand side, you see the literary devices I, um, or terms I'm going to mention. The first one is new criticism, and this is where I first encountered John Crow Ransom. He was one of the leaders of new criticism, which emphasizes a close reading, particularly of poetry, to discover how a work of literature functioned as a self-contained, self referential Referential aesthetic object. That means that it just let's look at the poem, the, the words cho used by the poet, the literary devices used by the poet, and let's not consider the social, political um, context of the poem um, or, the, or the writer. We don't need to know or we shouldn't need to know the biography of Emily Dickinson to understand Emily Dickinson's poetry. We don't need to know the biography of Robert Frost or Langston Hughes to understand their poetry. All we need to know or do is to examine the words on the page. That's where the 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 art is, not in their in their lives. Um, so some people uh, 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 don't like new criticism because not that it dismisses, say, feminist readings or uh, Marxist or new historicist readings, um, but it's saying that those those types of readings are are reliant on knowledge of of the world outside of the poem. Um, so new criticism is, is very much emphasizing the, 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 po the poem um, and the object of art over the world in which um, that object was produced. So that's new criticism. And John Crow Ransom was a leader of that, that school. Actually, when he was an undergraduate at Vanderbilt, um, he and some professors as well as other stu students of literature created a, a group called Fugitives. And they were, um, they were uh, posing um, over sentimentality in literature, particularly Southern literature. Um, and they were calling for a new aesthetic, um, not, a modern, um, not, a, not a modern aesthetic because they were actually um, opposed to um, advanced in the modern world, if you will. So um, they were more um, interested in the agrarian society. Um, and so he was, he was a, a young, young um, rebel on, on campus, I guess, with his, his friends of, of English um, professors and poets. Um, it reminds me somewhat of, of, of Dead Poet Society, the movie with um, Robin Williams and the, the boys getting together to read poetry to one another and the dangers of poetry. So, but that's, 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 um, I just did something. I, I, I gave you some of his, his, biographical information, which uh, new critics would say, don't do that. But I'm not going to use that in an analysis in the analysis of the poem. So back to the back to your screens. Um, um, the poem, once again, um, is Janet Waking. The literary terms, um, new criticism, I mentioned that I have quatrain, which is just a four line stanza of poetry. Um, this is a, a poem uh, 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 built around um, quatrains. Um, the rhyme scheme in this poem, A, B, B, A, um, we'll have a few slant rhymes, and that's where the words have a similar sound, but not identical, not identical. Um, we'll see how that, that, that works in the poem. Um, also, I have a couple of literary terms um, that I've uh, just thrown them out there, and I, I mention these um, um, because if I continue to mention these, um, you, you'll start looking for them on your own, but um, you can appreciate the poem without noticing the trimeter or the pentameter. But if you look at the poem, you'll see that the, the first and the fourth line of each quatrain is shorter. That's called a trimeter. There's, there's six syllables, if you will, six um, syllables in in that line, um, or three metrical feet, so trimeter. And then the next word is pentameter, which is five meters of, foot, uh, of, of, of poetry, if you will, five metrical feet of poetry, 10 syllables. So we have shorter, short line to start the stanza, two longer lines, and then we have um, a short line to end the stanza. It gives it a, 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 a seemingly innocent, um, in, innocent or um, um, lyrical um, um, sound, if you will, almost childlike, almost nursery rhyme, but not quite. And we'll see why um, we don't want to quite sing songy. 
Um, diction, once again, a word choice and um, grouping of words. As we go through the poem, I want you to just pay attention to the words chosen by, by John Crow Ransom um, and, and think about, uh, is there a shift in the, the type of words that are being used? So diction is, is word choice or grouping of words. Sometimes um, diction could be like, oh, we notice that a lot of the words come from the domestic sphere, or we notice that a lot of the words have some, some financial um, 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 history, word history to them. Um, so we, we want to look at the words and ask why these words, what kind of, what kind of meaning is um, being created by this grouping of words. All right, then denotation, connotation. Um, I, I think you'll notice that um, as we go through the poem, really wonderful uh, playfulness here in the poem with the denotation, connotation. Uh, but denotation is the literary meaning, the dictionary meaning. Connotation is the, the feeling that the word invokes um, in the context, um, in, in the way it's used in the poem. Um, alliteration, occurrence of same sounds. We'll notice some use of alliteration, uh, especially um, in the fourth, uh, the fourth stanza. You'll notice some alliteration as we go through it. Pun, a joke exploiting the different possibilities, uh, uh, possible meanings of a word or the fact that the words sound alike but have different meanings, kind of like a, a hominin, if you will. Um, mock heroic. Mock heroic um, is when you, you have the poet imitating some kind of uh, heroic literature, um, important um, grand. Um, characters and themes, um, but um, here um, we have mock heroic, where it kind of um, has a little fun with that. Sat use a satire and irony, um, and we, we we chuckle a little bit, and you'll see um, how we we should hopefully chuckle at a couple of images of the poem, and then biblical allusion. Um, um, biblical allusion are words um, and, and or situations that make direct references to the stories, um, characters, places, or motifs within a larger story or text. So those are some of the literary devices that we have, um, literary terms um, that we have in this poem. All right, so let us see what the poet is doing here. Um, Janet Waking by John Crow Ransom. Beautifully, Janet slept, so it was deeply morning. She woke then and thought about her dainty feathered hen to see how it had kept. One kiss she gave her mother, only a small one gave she to her daddy, who would have kissed each curl of his shining baby. No kiss at all for her brother. Oh, Chucky, oh, Chucky, she cried, running across the world upon the grass to Chucky's house and listening. But alas, her Chucky had died. It was a transmorgifying bee came droning down on Chucky's old bald head and sat and put the poison. It scarcely bled, but how exceedingly and purply did the knot swell with venom and communicate its rigor. Now the poor comb stood up straight, but Chucky did not. So there was Janet, kneeling on the wet grass, crying her brown hen, translated far beyond the daughters of men, to rise and walk upon it. Moving up. And weeping fast as she had breath, Janet implored us, wake her from her sleep, and would not be instructed in how deep was the forgetful kingdom of death. So nice, nice poem here. Um, um, playful, um, interesting, thematically um, 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 wonderful um, innocence to experience, if you will, um, a child um, waking to um, death in the world. So we, we, since I just mentioned that, we go, go, go to the title of the poem, we have Janet Waking. Um, and so when we see the title, we think, uh, Janet Waking, she was asleep. Um, Janet Waking, she is uh, 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 made aware of something in the world. She has an epiphany. She has some kind of uh, uh, realization. And we do have that in this poem. Janet wakes to um, death. The, the, the kingdom of death. Um, also, Janet waking, we have her kind of having a wake for her, her, her old Chucky at the end of the poem. Um, so we have, we have some nice playfulness. Um, this is an example of, of the word pun, if you will, um, that we have the, uh, that we have the ransom playing with the, the word wake, waking. Janet does wake. Janet does hold awake. Um, Janet does wake from sleep, and then she also wakes from um, innocence to experience. But so we have all of that in the in the title of the poem. After we've read the poem through, we see how that works in the title of the poem. All right, let, let us go to the first stanza. Beautifully, Janet slept till it was deeply, deeply morning. Deeply morning. What? 11 a.m. 10:30. It was early, it was deep into the morning. 
um, why not just say a time, but deeply mourning them, it, 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 it sets up the idea, it, well, she slept too long into the morning. Um, also, mourning here, we have the, the play on the, uh, um, um, so it was deeply mourning. She will be getting up and mourning the loss of O Chucky. O Chucky. And, and, and the idea that she was beautiful, um, that this innocence um, before awakening to the truth of the world. So Janet um, beautifully slept. So it was, it was, it was deeply mourning. Um, so we have late into the morning, and then we also have the word mourning that's, that, that's going to play into the idea that she, we, she will be mourning her dead chicken at the end, her dead hen at the end. She woke then and thought about her dainty, dainty feathered hen to see how it had kept. And, and that's, that's, that's not un, uncommon for children to have a pet. The first thing they do, they want to get up and see, ah, oh, let's go see if old Chucky's here. Let's go see, let's go play with the cat. Let's go play with the, the puppy or something. So that's what children get up and they want to go check on their pet. And, and the last line of that stanza we have to see how it had kept. How it kept is a nice word because it, one, it rhymes with the, the slept. Yes. So we have the nice um, rhyme scheme, A, B, B, A. Uh, but what also kept, kept it from spoiling, kept it from rotting to see how it had kept. But it hasn't kept well. Chucky has died. And so we have that, 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 that nice word um, um, kept there. Because um, kept typically suggests something about keeping it from spoiling, keeping it from um, um, going bad. Kept it. One kiss she gave her mother, only a small one she gave to her daddy, who would have kissed each curl of his shining baby. No kiss at all for her brother. And so we have a nice stanza there that she gets out of bed. She, oh, I got to go see Chucky. But she gives her mom a quick kiss. Dad's a little, uh, uh, only a small one. Um, and, and he, daddy wants to hold on to daddy's little girl, the, 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 the shining baby. And, and I, I can't help but think of like the, the siblings, um, no kiss at all for her brother, um, that, that uh -uh, I'm not kissing you. Um, and then she runs out of the house. Oh, Chucky, oh, Chucky, she cried, running across the, wor across the world upon the grass to Chucky's house and listening. But alas, oh, Chucky had died. Now, this is what I mean about nice word choice. We have, in the first part of the, the first three stanzas of the poem, we have beautiful, dainty, feathered. We have kiss. We have shining baby. We have um, um, all these kind of like uh, innocent words, if you will. Um, uh, uh, daddy, uh, dainty, feathered. And, and so we have uh, uh, the, kind of like the, the, these are the words that a, a little girl might have, a, a child might have in their head. And, oh, Chucky, oh, Chucky. And that, oh, Chucky is important because it contrasts with her innocence, her innocence. And running across the, uh, across the world upon the grass, because as a child, her whole world was her backyard. Her whole, her whole world was that patch of grass between her house and the hen house, and and that's where she lived. And so she's running across the across uh, running across the world upon the grass. Um, so um, it, it points to how small her world, and now that world is going to be translated far beyond uh, the daughters of men, which we'll get to later. So it, it shows that she's not only just ran across the backyard, but now she's running from innocence to experience, to old Chucky's house and listening. But alas, and there where I, I think of the mock heroic, alas, this is a a, 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 a poem that is 20th century. Um, we, 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 we think, why would the poet in the 20th century choose the word alas? But alas, her Chucky had died. Um, and here we get kind of that mock heroic that we're going to have a, a wake, a mourning um, for um, Chucky, old Chucky. Um, but I, 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 I think that it, we, before we move to the next stanza, I just want to once again point out the, the, the nice kind of innocent, kind of playful language in the first three stanzas there. And, and, and then we, we get to the, but alas, archaic word kind of signals a shift. What's going on here? Why the word alas kind of seems out of place there. Her Chucky died. Huh. Period. Chucky dead. It was a transmorgifying bee. Where did that word come from? Transmorgifying bee? A transmorgifying bee? Transmorgifying. Some, some magical transmorgifying means magical, supernatural. Some supernatural bee came along. And, and, and that, that word is, is, is different. It's, 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 it's multisyllabic. Um, many syllables to it. Uh, and it seems, it seems once again, a little out of place here. 
But the transborder fine B came droning down. Nice alliteration, droning down on Chucky's old bald head and sat and put the poison. It scarcely bled, but how exceedingly and purply did the knot swell and wit swell with the with venom and communicate its rigor. And and so now we have that 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 shift from that that playful language that I mentioned above um, to here we have uh, uh, poison, we have blood, we have um, venom, uh, we have purple knot. Um, so we have these 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 words that are are negative, that that um, um, are are not as playful, and that nice droning down. Um, there's a downward movement in the poem from the, the elation, the elation Janet's feeling. Oh, Chucky, oh, Chucky, she's running. And the bee came, the transmortifying bee came droning down. And, and, and Janet's feelings and her, 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 her joy comes down as well um, as, as she realizes Chucky has been killed. Droning down and sat and put the poison. And it's interesting, and put the poison, didn't sting, but put the poison to kill Chucky. It scarcely bled, but how exceedingly and purply did the knot swell with the venom and communicate its rigor. Now, a word I don't have in literary terms is enjambment, and that's when there's there's no punctuation at the end of a line of poetry, and it, and, and the, it, it, it causes the reader just to drop down to um, um, read those lines a little bit faster, not a, not a longer pause at the end of the line, and also connects those ideas, that, that scene a little bit better. But how exceedingly and purply did the knot swell with venom and communicate. There, there we have that nice personification too, that the, it's communicating something, it's saying something, it's rigor. Um, and so we, we, we have nice enjambment and that, that, that purpley knocked, that venom communicated its rigor. And there, once again, we have another, another playfulness, just like we had waking, um, play on that word waking. We have morning, we have the, that it's, it's morning time, a.m., um, uh, or morning that we're mourning the loss of somebody, um, here, we're lo lo the loss of Chucky, but rigor, it's rigor, communicated its rigor. We, ha we can't help but think of rigor mortis, right? Um, it's it, 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 it's rigor. It's it, 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 it's it's it, this is something permanent, if you will. Um, so we have we have that word rigor, wonderful there, um, because it does suggest that rigor board is as well as the the inability to change what has happened. And we see how that ha that appears in the next couple stanzas. Now here's the here it ties into the mock heroic as well as kind of the playfulness uh, of the poem. Um, now the poor comb stood up straight. I think about the, the, the hen's comb, the chicken's comb uh, on top of their head. It's standing up straight, um, but Chucky did not. Uh, so uh, the comb's sticking up straight, but the chicken's on its back. And I, I can't help but think of like a, 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 a cartoon in which the the bird is, is, is in the hand with its feet sticking straight up. Oh, um, what was that, that, that dead bird there? Um, um, so we have the kind of like the, 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 the comb standing straight up, but Chucky... Mm. Can't say the same because he's been killed by a bee. So I, I, we we chuckle at this. We 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 should laugh at that. But that doesn't take away from the seriousness of the theme of this transition from innocence to innocence to experience. Um, that 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 um, the poet is 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 trying to convey here. This movement from being that child that woke up um, so happy to run outside and see your dainty feathered hen. Um, and runs through her, her, her family, mother, daddy, brother, and cries, Chucky, only to learn that Chucky has passed away. So we have, we have nice imagery, too, that purpley knot um, swells. We see the, the swelling of that purpley knot. Uh, and once again, we have the, the, the kind of like humorous image of the comb standing straight up, but Chucky not. So there was Janet. Let me move up here. And so there was Janet um, kneeling on the wet grass, crying her brown head. That's wonderful. The tears, uh, the tears, and the brown hen's death become one. Um, they're one and the same. Um, as she's, and, and you just hear her. You get that, that crying her brown hen instead of saying, "Oh, Chucky, oh, Chucky, oh, Chucky," crying her brown hen. We know um, the tears and the, the the crying are one and the same. Um, and so there was Janet kneeling on the wet grass, crying her brown hen, 
parenthetically translated far beyond the daughters of men. So it's interesting. The parentheses once again, it's it's a it's a it, it it's it's to emphasize the parentheses emphasize that line. Also points to that uh, that just as the bee was transmorgify the, the a transmorgifying bee, supernatural bee, magical bee, um, Janet has now um, been translated far. She's been changed. The bee went from being alive. I mean, the Chucky went from being alive to being dead. Uh, 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 Janet has translated from being innocent, daddy's little girl, to far beyond the daughters of men. And so she's she, she's had a transformation, just as Ch Chucky has had a transformation, to rise and walk upon it. And I, and and there we have uh, the kind of biblical illusion. You can't help but think of the the Bible story in which uh, uh, Lazarus um, is um, is is raised from the from the dead. Um, and instructed to rise upon the world, um, and that, that promise of, uh, of, of, of of rebirth, if you will, or the miracle of Christ. And so we have that kind of at the back of our mind here. But uh, Janet, uh, Chucky's not going to rise. Chucky's not going to rise and, and walk again upon it. Um, and, and we, we, we to, to kneeling on the wet grass, crying her brown, brown, brown hen, to rise and walk upon it. We know those aren't the words that, uh, that, that little Janet was thinking, but the, the speaker of the poem gives us those, uh, to rise and walk upon it. Um, and weeping fast as she had breath, Janet implored us. What? Where did that us come from? Who's that us? It, it's, it's not referring back to the family. They're inside the house. That us is the speaker of the poem. That us is the 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 the, the reader or the readers of the poem. That us is those ha that have already been uh, um, translated. Those of us that have already gone from innocence to experience implored us, wake her from her sleep. So that us is uh, those of us that have uh, that are bearing witness um, to Janet's awakening. The readers, the the speaker. Uh, those in the know about death. That's the us. And, 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 and so we, we think Janet implored us to wake her from her sleep uh, and, and would not be instructed in how deep was the forgetful kingdom of death. I, I love this last stanza because the, the, the words uh, uh, wake, sleep, deep. Um, of course, I'm going to scroll up a little bit here um, just to remind you again, um, um, we have deep morning um we have that that slap the uh, sleeping um so we have that those same words kind of uh, uh uh repeated in the last stanza um that she 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 slept too um deep into that morning she had to awake from that morning she slept beautifully deeply into morning um and and now the world is saying uh, janet is saying to the world wake me from this sleep I, 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 I'm, I'm hoping I'm, 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 I'm dreaming. I'm hoping I'm dreaming. Now, wonderful here too. Um, or she's saying, wake Chucky from this sleep. Wake Chucky from this sleep. Have him walk and rise upon it. So that, that ambiguity of her, of, of the, the word her implored us to wake her from her sleep. Wake up Chucky. Have her, have her walk upon this world. Or wake her from this dream, this nightmare, this wake her from this sleep. And and and, and Chucky will be alive. Um, so we have we have that as uh, once again the, the use of pronouns, ah, word choice so important, word choice so important. Um, that, that that why throw in the the, the us the, the first person um, plural there that like all of us are involved in this. All right, and would not be instructed in how deep that denial. A denial. You know, all things die. Everything, every, everything dies eventually, Janet. Um, and would not be instructed how deep was the forgetful, uh, forgetful kingdom of death. Um, that, 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 that. I, I think there's a couple ways of looking at that, that. The last line, the last couple lines there is that she would not be instructed. She resisted how, 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 how forgetful, how, how deep. Was the forgetful kingdom of doubt that 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 is something that happens and and you stay dead forever, okay? Or 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 I, I think uh, and would not be instructed in how deep was the forgetful kingdom of doubt that we all are aware of death. Janet is aware of death um, now, um, and 
us, the readers, are aware, the speaker were aware of it. And in some way um, was, a, uh, was the forgetful kingdom of death. We have to forget about death to go about our daily lives. We can't sit here and, 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 and be melancholy um, uh, about, oh, oh, one day we're going to die. Um, oh, this is all going to come to an end eventually. We're all going to end up like poor old Chucky. No, we have to be forgetful of that and continue to live our lives. Um, and so there's, 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 there's certainly there's ambiguity at the end, not because the poet didn't want to give clarity, but just, just give some suggest, suggestibility to the, the poem, okay? Um, with the use of, of, of pronouns, if you will. The, the us throwing us off a little bit, the her referring either to Janet or to, um, to Chucky. The, and, and, and that would not be instructed in how deep was the forgetful kingdom of death. There, 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 there's uh, certainly a lack of, of uh, uh, clarity in that, that that suggested the last two lines there. Um, would not be instructed in how deep was the forgetful kingdom of death. Um, that it, it is it is very deep. Death is very forever, and and, and we uh, have to come to, to a point where we for, forget about. We all come to that end to to live our lives. So um, it's it really is a a, a, a wonderful poem. And you'll see that uh, my, my beginning when I talked about new criticism and John Crow Ransom's involvement with fugitives and their ideas about poetry, um, um, none of that played into uh, our walking through the poem. We just looked at the words on the page. We, we said what words were used, why these words, um, and um, how do they contribute to the meaning? Um, so hopefully you notice uh, the, the you, you go back and you reread the poem um, and you look at the, the use of, of, of the word choices at the beginning of the poem. Um, think about how Janet is, is, is seen then um, and how the, the word choice changes after the word transmorgifying um, and the images changes after that. Um, hopefully you, you recognize the, the shift from trimeter to pen, um, pentameter um, and how that kind of breaks up the sing-song quality. There's still a playfulness here, but uh, the longer lines um, in some way breaks that up. Um, so it doesn't sound like too innocent of a poem um, because it's seemingly innocent, but leads to a, a larger, less um, innocent um, understanding about life um, and death. All right. So... Um, once again, I, I hope you um, learned something as we went through this poem. I hope that uh, you're going to go back and explore more about this the, this poem. Um, but thank you for tuning in and um, see you next time.